Hello everybody and welcome back to my little Conjuration Ordinator Perk Tree Exploration series. That's a mouthful. Um, so here we are in Ryx End. This is the home that I'm using for this character on this profile. Uh, I went ahead and sold all my stuff that I could anyway at Riverwood and I disenchanted all the good loot over here on the old Arcane Enchanter. And I took the opportunity to enchant some of my gear. Now, we don't use any weapons, so I couldn't really enchant any of that, but... Um, let's see, I got a 3% chance every second to restore 5 points of health, magic, or stamina on the boots. Uh, we have a health increase of only 6 points on our clothes. Uh, we have carry capacity up by 2 points on our gloves. Oh, this is all just ridiculous, isn't it? Another increase of 3 points on the, uh, on the amulet. Um, 2% more damage from bows on the mage hood and uh, increase our health by one point with that. So yeah, I mean, it, obviously this stuff isn't all that useful, but it was useful in obtaining levels uh, in the enchanting tree, which uh, I think would be a good idea to use with this uh, character concept slash build um, slash character class, I guess. Um, I also went through spell research and kind of opened that up a little bit just to see. I do see myself using that with a character like this in like a long play role play setting. Um, ah, it just takes too long. Uh, there's too much, too many hoops to jump through um, for a, a scenario like this where we're just trying to explore the perk tree. Uh, let's see, we also did go and buy uh, Frostbite. This is the only destruction spell that Lucan had at his shop. Um, so we bought it. Uh, we'll have to go back to Whiterun once we get through everything here. Um, so we asked around for rumors. And the closest thing we got right now is this Brittle Shin Pass. Now, anybody not familiar with interesting NPCs doesn't really know what this is all about. Anybody who is familiar with inter interesting NPCs uh, knows that this is where you find Zora, one of the most fleshed out, uh, well done characters uh, in that mod. Uh, this also gives us kind of a path to come back up here. Um, uh, to it, That actually puts us right on our way to Swindler's Den to take care of Kamadu for Sadia. Um, and then from there, we can go to Silent Moon's camp to take care of the bounty that we have and head back to Whiterun to collect the bounty and to tell Sadia that she's in the clear. Um, sell off all her loot and hopefully um, buy some uh, more destruction spells from Ferengar once we're there. Now, we also wanted to test out some more of our spells here. I think uh, we're going to make a point to okay we're gonna we're probably gonna do flame atronach one more time in the swindler's den area and then i think i want to switch to the cat totem just try that one out for a while um i also want to try out this consuming power thing just to see you know how how much it works how effective it really is 75 percent extra attack damage for 21 seconds now that we've increased our uh conjuration uh skill up to 74 already um that's actually pretty good. Uh, already our battles aren't lasting 21 seconds, I, I think even by a long shot, uh, most of them anyway. So that will be fun to try out too, I suppose. Let's go ahead and favorite Frostbite so we have that ready to go. Uh, we learned the Clairvoyant spell, which is the one that we found in the Iron Mine. What is that place called? An Iron Bind Barrow. Ember Shard Mine. Iron Bind Barrow is something else. Ember Shard Mine where we found that. I feel like there might have been one more spell that we got to you, but I'm not seeing it. Whatevs. Um, okay, and when we go back to White, White Run, we can uh, we can upgrade our spells again uh, with Farangar. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Uh, we probably have a few levels up here that we, we need to take care of. Um, uh, our magic is down. We might need a rest again before before we head out. Uh, it's a spell research thing. When you're mentally fatigued, uh, your magical pool is is lessened. Three point 
three levels that time, huh? Now we got five perks to use, but we have a conservation level of 74 now, so we have some more stuff that we can take. Um, elemental potency. Atronaut conjurations now call potent atronauts that are a higher level and more powerful. I don't think this is going to affect um, the cat totems or, or anything like that. I, it looks like it's just atronauts. But we'll see. Um, what else do we have here that we can actually take right now? Along this tree, we're not going to get anything else until level 80. So that should happen actually pretty quickly, I would think. Uh, and then level 90 and 100 over there. What do we have over here on the bound weapons front? Dark Whispers. Bound weapons induce a battle rage in their wielder, granting 20% extra damage and 100 points of armor rating for 5 seconds when a target is struck. Okay, so that's just going to make us stronger. It's going to deal us more damage and make us a little more um, resilient to at least physical damage while we're in there, which is going to help a lot. I'll gladly take that one. And now we still have three perks to burn here. By the time we get enough levels up in Conjuration, we're going to we're going to have more perks to use for these for these other um, for these more advanced perks up here, so I don't think we need to save them for anything. Destruction is going to be more of a focus, but we don't have the levels there to, to do anything about it yet. Restoration may become more of a focus once we get to Meridia, but right now, as long as we can... We, we don't have a big health pool, so our regular old uh, healing spell is doing just fine. Do we have anything more we can do over here? Yes, we can take another point mage armor, which is great. Um, anything in combat? I think we're going to be using the bound sword for a while, if not if not indefinitely with, with the way this build is shaping up. Block is still good to have, and timed block. Yeah, let's go ahead and do some of those. I know I said I wasn't going to take any more of the mastery, but time to block is just too good. Um, it it just guides you down uh, too good of a path in the game. It, time to blocking feels really good. It's one of my favorite mechanics uh, in the nice Scion combat mods, uh, being Ordinator and Wildcat. Uh, so I can't avoid not taking it. I'm sorry, I can't avoid taking it. Alright, so uh, I said we were going to rest again, didn't I? Let's just make sure that's what's bugging us here. Daedric pull. Okay, so reduced armor and magic resistance until we have a minion. Mental exhaustion. Spend a few hours sleeping to recover. Okay. That's going to lower our magic pool by 30, which is not insignificant. Um, and then the moderate thirst. So moderate hunger and thirst. Okay. So we can take care of those. Yeah, we may as well just wait until after we're done sleeping. Uh, okay, 24 hours is going to put us at midnight tomorrow. So we want to go out while it's dark, so we'll go ahead and shave off four hours. That'll put us at 8.42 p.m. the next day. So yeah, up through Brittleshin, which uh, actually isn't that tough of a uh, of a dungeon, but we should still get some good level ups in there uh, for our pertinent skills. And then up to uh, Swindler's Den for Kamatu, and then the Lunar Forge, Silent Moon's Camp. Uh, for the bounty, and then back to Whiterun to sell off everything and buy some stuff. And then we'll start taking on... Oh, I also forgot to mention that um, uh, the courier did come by and say that uh, a new museum was opening up in Dawnstar, and we should go check that out. So we'll head up over there too at some point. I think the order of operations that we're going to use for this is probably Statue of Meridia, uh, and then the Museum of Dawnstar. The Statue of Meridia is pretty quick. Um, the Merun's Razor and Azura's Star kind of multi-step um, 
quests that lead you all over the province. Um, but the Meridia quest is, is pretty easily done, so I think that'll be the first one that we do, just to see how well uh, that um, worshipping Meridia uh, fits in with this character concept. He's not a necromancer, so I don't think he would oppose, be opposed to Meridia, and he is super impressed by all of the uh, all of the um, Daedric princes, pretty much. So we'll see how well that works. Oh, and he's hungry and thirsty, so let's go ahead and take care of that too. On our way to Brittleshin. All right, so here we are at Brittleshin. Uh, we got a couple wolves here that we can harvest. Oh, looks like I'm out of soul gems. So yeah, I'll need to get more soul gems once I uh, get back to White Run too. But anyway, here we are at Brittleshin. Let's see how this goes. I want to go ahead and refresh our uh, our Atronox, although uh, they're lasting for a really long time. Great. I actually wonder if it shows that in the current effects. Conjure Flame Atronach. Uh, it's going to last for 39 minutes total. That's awesome. If we can find some... I, I, apparently there's a Necromancer in here that is keeps abduct, abducting uh, Zora. So um, we should be able to use his robes and that will help quicken our... Uh, or magic or regeneration a little bit. So now we'll switch to Frostbite and the Bound Sword. Awesome. Frost Runes. We should probably turn on our lantern here. There we go. That's better. Alright, and a quick save. Okay, so somebody found us. Oh. Try to level up that uh, destruction skill as much as possible. That worked a lot better against these skeletons than I expected. Uh, I guess I'm so used to playing it legendary that forgot just how easy Adept could be. Okay. Oh, I should have picked that lock. Anyway, we'll just have to get out of here. get some. Anything? Anyone? She's got a nice voice, huh? Want to get hit by that thing? That would hurt. Yeah, Bozo. Oh, he's got a lot. <laughs> got a lot going on there. Uh, do I have any kind of potions or anything that are help me out with this? Uh, no. Not really, huh? Electrospheres and ice storms? Hell are my Atronox? Alright. Uh, I think I'm going to cast some new ones. Just to get them over there. Ooh, that didn't last long. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, 
What was I saying about this being too easy? Okay, so I'm keeping the spell charged up, which uh, energizes the, the Adronauts and makes them stronger. But that takes a lot of magic up. Because I don't recover magicka while I'm charging, but it's a tough trade. Is he out of magicka? Where'd he go? me he is not. He's also got that electrosphere. Oh, he keeps healing himself too. Bastard. Is he shooting that thing through walls? That is not fair. Well, getting lots of conjuration levels here anyway. I feel like I'm gonna need to get in there. need some more conjure constructs here. Can't afford the debuff right now. Okay, just had to get in on him. I don't have a lot of magic or resistance. Okay, uh, okay, those will help. And the Staff of Electrospheres is also welcome. Wither probably won't be using this much, but I'll take it anyway. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get kitted out here. The robes of Destruction are definitely better than what I'm wearing right now. Everything else I can keep. The electrospheres are empty. That that probably saved our life right there. Okay, let's uh, take the opportunity to refresh our Atronox just so that we don't get debuffed again. There we go. Bound Sword and Frostbite back at it. Okay. Let's get you out of here, Missy. I need a new controller. My uh, right stick is getting stuck in certain positions, and it's uh, it's causing me to lose lock picks. Oh, she speaks really quietly too. Do you mind keeping that closed? Uh, what? A bit of a draft. Uh, but the cage door has holes in it. 
You do realize that was a joke, don't you? What's a joke? I expect my hero to lack a sense of humor. Uh... Yeah, well, the feeling is mutual. You're not exactly what I want either. Now, now, let's not fight. We can save that for later when we find out what it is we don't like about each other. Alright, so you're gonna come out of the cage? Maybe. I'd grow quite fond of it. Ugh, she is insufferable. Well, I guess that's it. But I do like squares. Alright, so we can use a follower for now. She kind of owes us. I, I, she's being snarky about uh, rescuing her, so she owes us for the assist. You have my steel. So we'll have her follow us. something he would definitely be into, I think. Oh, yep, yeah, okay, gotta meditate. See, I'm learning. That's what this is all about, right? Uh, what the hell? Nice, conjuration to 82. Okay. Awesome. Steel dagger of anger. That. Arturian heresy, not interested. Uh, let's see here. What else do we got? More potions. Poisons, rather. Not much of anything else, it looks like. Okay, let's get on out of here. Wait a minute, what's that? Human heart? <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Okay, these are all potions that uh, grant us uh, knowledge for spell research. Very useful. Robes of Major Conjuration. That's even better than what we have, I think. Translation Tome. Alien. Okay, another spell research thing, so that will be helpful as well. Uh, let's see if these robes are any better, though. I think they are. Minor Destruction, Major Conjuration. Yeah, definitely Major Conjuration. 17% um, less Magicka for each Conjuration spell. Uh, and ma Magicka regenerates faster, so yeah, that's definitely better. I wonder if I can double dual cast our uh, Flame Atronox here. Oh yeah, just barely, but then we don't have anything left over for our uh, Bound Sword. So we still need to work on Magicka Pool. We'll have to concentrate on that. Still might be able to leverage uh, Okado's recital for that too. Oh, the astronaut covered our flank there. That was pretty cool. What else we got here? Not much. chest up there I saw? No, it was just a rock. Nah, just a rock. May as well use this for... I, we have the robes at least. I don't think we have anything else though. Oh yeah, we do. We have the mace. If target dies within 10 seconds, it fills a soul gem. We don't need that because of the bound blade. Uh, major conjuration we're using. Minor destruction. That can come in handy. Uh, steel dagger of anger. Target is consumed by anger, taking 3 magic of damage for 10 seconds. Or until it attacks or casts a spell. Um, we're not really using physical weapons, so... Not really useful, but we'll take it for the uh, leveling. Why not? Is there anything over here? No. 
don't think there's anything left in here, but we'll have the sword ready just in case. You mean the cave we just came out of? Not too bright, are you there, Zora? You know, I get her name mixed up with uh, Tally Zora from the Mass Effect series. I keep wanting to call her Tally for some reason. It's Zora, not Tally. Alright, so I think we're going to bring her along uh, for a little extra tankiness on our... Ooh. It's Ragnar the Red. Uh, you mean the lantern on my hip? Are you just staring at my ass? Okay. Let's go ahead and take the opportunity to level up here. Again. So sick of leveling up. Concentrate on Magicka. Need that more than anything right now. Uh, we're not quite at 20 with destruction yet. That kind of surprises me. Uh, we're all the way up at almost 84 for conjur- oh no, just 83 for conjuration. I don't know that there's anything for 80 that we can take right now. Oh yeah, there is. Unleash Hell. Conjure Daedra within 75 feet. Gain additional spells on a 30 second cooldown. Flame Atronach has Fire Explosion. Frost Atronach, Reduced Armor Magic Resistance Curse. Storm Atronach, Magnetic Knockdown. Dramora. Increased attack damage and movement speed. So it doesn't look like this affects any of the um, added constructs from Apocalypse. Except for maybe some of the, the different uh, Dramora that it adds. So that is really excellent, actually. I don't think it's going to affect our Cat Totem, but it should definitely affect our, our Flame Atronox. So we're taking that for sure. What do we have up here? Okay, it looks like our ultimate uh, perk for... Oh, maybe this one is actually... Hollow Binding reduces magic reduction by magic. Yeah, okay, so not quite there yet, but close. But we can take this one. Brand a corpse by striking it with a bound weapon or by delivering the killing blow with a bound weapon attack. The brand grants 25 attack damage and 100 points of health when reanimated or resurrected. Undead and automaton. Okay, so that's not going to do us any good. That's necromancer only. Um, although it does seem very helpful for a necromancer character, so we'll have to keep that in mind when we explore these other trees uh, in the next series, I think. This one comes up at 90, though. Uh, hollow Binding reduces Magicka Resistance by an additional 30% if you control a Summon Daedra or other non-undead minion. That's going to be very helpful once we get there, but we still have another 7 levels of Conjuration to hit first. Um, summon Resist, that's also another 91. Um, friendly Conjured Daedra and other non-undead minions within 75 feet gain 50% Magic Resistance and 300 points of armor. That would have helped us out a lot in that last fight against the Necromancer. Um, okay, so that's some stuff to look forward to, but uh, we'll definitely have a perk next time we level up for that. Or probably even two. Uh, destruction, we can't take anything there yet. Restoration, we haven't used in a while. Alteration? We have 50 now. Uh, what do we have? Energy shield, if wearing robes and no light or heavy armor, reduces incoming attack and, el attack and elemental damage by 35%, but you lose magicka equal to the amount of health lost. The damage reduction gradually diminishes as magicka falls below half. The energy shield is disabled when your hands are lowered. Uh, okay, that actually sounds good. I don't like the trade-off between health and Magicka, because right now Magicka is more important to us than health, but um, it's only going to affect us if we take damage. Um, and we haven't been taking a lot of damage, because we've been using our, our minions to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Um, so that could actually be good. Uh, it's a nice little safety net for us if things get, get too 
too hairy. Ooh, what's this over here? Is this another thing added by Winter Sun? Or is that just the same Jeffrey shrine? Okay, yeah, that's just the same Jeffrey shrine that we were at. Okay, so we need to follow this path to Swindler's Den. And since we're cutting through the wildlands here, we might get lucky enough and happen upon another Sky Shard or another Winter Sun Shrine somewhere. That would be cool. Uh, I still haven't been playing with Winter Sun all that much, so I still have a lot to explore there. Haven't really encountered a lot of, um... What's that over there? A lot of shrines yet, either. Just, just a couple scattered ones here and there. So I definitely have a lot to discover on that front as well. What's going on over here? Who is that? Is that a scavenger? Alright, do I still have my... Yeah, we do. Okay. Okay, very, they must be ignored. But as long as I'm concentrating, whoa. <laughs> as long as I'm concentrating, my Atronachs are doing a lot more. Can I knock them out? Okay, that's another one of those KO mechanics. I might try to disable that. What do we have here? Some stuff we can sell, some more gloves we can enchant. Not a whole lot of anything else. I think that there were some dead Stormcloaks and Imperial soldiers over here, though. That he was scavenging from. They might have some stuff. Amulet of Talos, we can hang that up in uh, at Ryak's End. Some more torches for Tally, or Tally, <laughs> uh, Zora, to hold for us. <clears throat> she might also be able to use the uh, the composite bow there too. Imperial armor is pretty valuable. Okay. Save it up here. Where else are we going? Getting there. Uh, let's go ahead and take the opportunity to refresh our Atronox again. Oh, you know what? We were going to switch to... Um, uh, the Cat Totem, weren't we? Now, this is unfortunate because we did just take that perk in the Conjuration Tree that strengthens our Atronox and gives them more spells to use. That was Elemental Potency. No, that was um, Unleash Hell. Elemental Potency is another thing for Atronox. But it's time to uh, to try some new things here. We'll get through at least Swindler's Den with this. And then we can change it back up to Atronox. Oh, was that one a dud? I've noticed that sometimes you, catch, you cast these... Um, summons here. And, oh, will it only allow me one of those? How about this? Interesting. Guess I can only have one of those summoned at a time. Is the, um... Itch of Oblivion is some one additional minion. It doesn't stipulate which... what kind, though. Oh, okay, so it's a stipulation specifically for this, that you only get one. Uh, that's okay, because um, we can still get to take advantage of our uh, of the buffs on our on our potent Atronach there. Potent Flame Atronach. Let's go ahead and refresh that guy too. Um, so we're going to have to have both of these uh, favorited. There we go. And I gotta rethink our, our hotkeys again as well.
Something tells me the hotkeys are going to change radically depending on the context I'm, uh, the, the spells that I'm using at the time and everything. In a long play where progression is slower, uh, both in terms of uh, leveling and in terms of uh, just the game going slower because of role-playing stuff, um, I'll have more time to figure out the hotkey situation for whatever my current loadout is. Uh, but for now, ooh, is that another shrine? Let's go check that out. I love the mods that encourage you to explore the world. Uh, ooh. Oh, I thought that was, that was a bandit chasing us. There's a tally. Tally. Ugh, it's just Zora. What kind of shrine is this? I think oh, it's just a Stendar. Just Stendar. Oh, but we do have uh, an enchanting skill tree. Let's go ahead and do some meditation here, huh? Nice, 57 on in the enchanting. We don't care about this Bozo Stendar, so we're just gonna go ahead and loot the crap out of his shrine. Don't need the salt pile, but we'll take the uh, the gems. Um, yeah. Anyway, as I was saying, I, I love um, mods that encourage you to go explore the world. Uh, we have uh, some wolves here. It looks like. my bound sword. There we go. Uh-oh. Now we're in for it. Alright, we gotta do our best here. Alright, we need another uh, Atronach. Where did that astronaut go? Was that a dud? What's this thing? Interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, that astronaut summon seemed to fail. sword. Gotta get her kitted out too. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, um, I really love mods that encourage you to explore the world. One of Skyrim's greatest aspects is, uh, is its world and uh, the world building that they've done uh, on Skyrim and actually any BGS game. Um, so mods that encourage you to get out there and uh, explore it instead of just fast traveling everywhere um, are A-OK -okay in my book. Oops, don't want her to have that, that will hurt. Everything else looks good. I don't know what that was. In, oh, your weapon, maybe? Alright. Uh, so yeah, Winter Sun is awesome. Uh, because it has the shrines scattered all over the place, and they hide some of the shrines in very interesting places. Oops, I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? How's this? Yeah, there we go. Um, places that aren't immediately apparent. So, not only do they reward going off the beaten path, but they also um, provide little, um, nice little surprises uh, from just happening upon them organically. 
Okay, I see some people running around. Looks like a mage battle over there. Oh, we gotta save the cat. Oops. Well, that was quick. I think I accidentally cast a non-dual cast uh, Flame Matronach, so we'll refresh that guy. And our Cat Totem is still active. I think she'll be active for a while. Nope. She either died or... Or something. Let's get her back in here. Seems like a really powerful... Uh, tanky minion, too. I like it. Just gotta make sure that I have my spells handy that I meant to have handy. And I'm going the wrong way again. Oh boy. Let's go ahead and just bring up the UI. It's a wolf. And another level up, oddly enough. So this configuration that I'm using for um, Ordinator, I think it uncaps every skill to 255. But I think that um, in terms of, oh geez, I'm going, I got too many map markers up. Uh, I think in terms of um, affecting your overall level, only levels up to 155 are taken into account. So while you can continue to level these skills and get stronger in them, um, they really only count toward level ups up to level 155. Um, so it's a little more balanced than you would think. Um, uncapping skills all the way up that high but uh, it does uh, keep you from leveling up too much and taking too many perks. She got a clean lick in there. But with everything else we got going on here, it didn't hurt that much. Yeah, I think this Mage Armor stuff is a, in the Alteration skill tree is a nice alternative to, uh, to wearing armor. Armor just doesn't fit with this character type, I think. Helmets are... they have a good uh, value to weight ratio. So we'll take them. Oh boy. Getting spanked. Where's my dudes? Oh, they got stuck on the terrain over there. No bueno. Yeah, that hurts. So what I'm going to do is recast our minions out over this way. So we'll get the cat totem in there first to do the tanky duties for us. How did that end up behind me? That is annoying. Alright, whatever. We'll let them come to us. Ah! 
forgot to use consuming power. Did run off? Yeah, I did. Got me somehow. Such a good team. Okay, so our minions, our summons are having some trouble with the terrain here. Which kind of sucks. We'll just have to do our best. Uh, let's. Have this ready to go. So, yeah, I want to make it a, uh, a point to use that consuming power spell. Got anything else over here? Worth a grabbing. That doesn't look like it. Where is my cat totem? She's still around. There we go. Alright, I gotta keep moving. And let's put the consuming power on there. Okay, so it's a bit tough to hit the moving target there, so I think it might be worth it, especially if we're not uh, if we're not going to get the full lifetime of these minions uh, to just go ahead and uh, do a single cast on them, not the dual cast. So that way we can have the uh, the other spell ready to go. Not like that. Okay, we gotta heal up. Alright, this is gonna take some practice, I think. Definitely taking this stuff. Haven't saved in a while, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, that one went better, I think. So we can keep these Atronachs around for a long while, actually. And then when we start the battle... Oh, we read that at Bleak Falls. 
Um, when we start the battle, we switch to Conjure Cat Totem with the Consuming Power. And that's going to be a very powerful ally for us. Uh, the trick is, we either have to know that an enemy is right around the corner, or um, or be able to be quick with our buttons to be able to uh, conjure this guy and hit him with consuming power at the, s uh, at the same time. So they last for 22 seconds and then die. I imagine that will get better with um, with the conjuration skill as it increases, but I don't know for sure. I think it does because I think it started out at 14 seconds. So it looks like the bandit highwayman was. was knocked out instead of killed. Uh, so let's go ahead and just uh, finish that off. We should be cautious in case there are otters. Not really too afraid of otters. Zora. Said her name right that time. I'm learning. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Back to consuming power and conjure cat totem. Anything over here? I think the instool is what I was thinking of. I, I remember there being something valuable over there. Oh! That hurt. Heal up. A lot of spell switching going on here. Uh, a little bit. A little bit of um, hotkey management would help us out a lot here, but like I said, I'm limited to two only. So it's going to take some creative thinking to get through that. Figure out what exactly I can use. That didn't go so poorly, huh? Sell all that stuff for good money. Alright, so Sadia should better pay us some money, uh, especially after the 100, 100 gold out of pocket we spent to free that other Alakir. But we have some good loot here anyway, which I guess is the real reward. And, uh... All the levels we got otherwise. I wonder if Zora would like to use... Oh! Let's revive her. She's out cold. Um... Alright, I guess we'll just wait for her to <laughs> come back here. She took a beating, I guess. Poor girl. Uh, what I was saying is I wonder 
if she would uh, like to use that trident. We'll get the uh, that sweet new animation on there too. Uh, you may have heard something going off in the background, uh, like an alarm or something. That was my alarm telling me that this uh, episode should be coming to an end. Um, I just want to make sure that Zora wakes up. She's out cold. Um, I wonder if I give her a potion if she'll use it. I'll take the opportunity here. Yeah, there she goes. Alright, I'm just uh, trying to figure out this knockout mechanic mod here. It seems to be working well. I don't know why her fists are all up like that. Remember, a good leader is brave but not reckless. Firm but not rigid. Uh, that was a little reckless, wasn't it? Um, okay. So let's make sure your gear is okay. Okay, she still has everything, she just unequipped it for some reason. Um, Red Guard Trident, damage 30. How does she like that? She does like it. Cool. Sorry, it didn't look like my lantern was on. Uh, so I just had to make sure. Alright, so we learned some stuff. Uh, and we came up with a little bit of a, uh, a battle plan that works for the those uh, saber cats. Or the cat totem, anyway. Um, and I do like the, uh, the combination of the cat totem, which is uh, a very powerful melee... Um, minion and the flame atronach which is a very powerful ranged minion at this point um, that fight at the end there is is not an easy one that's a pretty tough fight uh, even at adept uh, that's a lot of enemies to take care of at once um, and we were able to handle it just barely by the skin of our teeth uh, but we did it uh, and I think it's working well so far so, oh, Connor's looking a little more uh, magey too, by the looks of it. I like it. Okay, so I think that does it for this episode. We still have yet to um, take care of the bounty at Silent Moon's camp, and then we gotta head home, or not home, but to White Run uh, to tell Sadia that Kamatu was taken care of. See what our reward is for that and uh, turn in the bounty that we got over there. Um, and then, I don't know what's next after that, maybe Meridia? Anyway, oh, let's go ahead and uh, level up while we're at it here, too. Uh, still working on this Magicka pool. Oh, Conjuration is only one away from 90, and we can take some of that good stuff. I might just bank a couple of these perks. Um, so Summon Resist is great, and that is, requires 90. March of Oblivion is sort of our ultimate perk that we're going to end up taking here. Brand of the Necromancer, we don't need. Covenant of Cold Harbor requires 90. So I'm going to save two perks uh, for these two that require 90 in Conjuration. And we'll fill those in, so that will be good. Um, destruction, it looks like we can increase now. We'll go ahead and... Take another one in Destruction Mastery, which will make our Destruction Spells a little a little more powerful. We're not going to use Dual Casting for Destruction. This seems a little too situational. I probably won't do the um, Force of Nature. Uh, combustion. These these we might end up using, though. That just strengthens our uh, our Elemental Spells even more so. 
Uh, but anyway, we can we can explore this a little further. Uh, we have a home for these two perks already. Uh, Conjuration will be up to 90 in no time at all. Uh, we will definitely get to that next episode. But until then, uh, Connor Demoniac and myself bid the adieu. I'll see you next time. Take care.